It's been about a year since I posted my first two videos about oil irrigation. In that year, I've learned a number of things about making and installing Oyas, and I'd like to share with you some of the successes and failures which I've encountered. My method of making Oyas has changed. Initially, I tried to simply glue two pieces of tubing into the top of a pot, but found that the silicone caulk would not adhere to the polyethylene tubing well enough to seal it and keep it in place. I then tried using rubber stoppers and hose barbs as an interface between the tubing and the Oyas, but found that there were problems with the stoppers coming loose and with degradation of the stoppers due to ozone and ultraviolet radiation. I also had issues with my dog getting into the garden and running into the tubing, which knocked the stoppers loose. I've changed the method of connecting the Oyas by simply drilling a 7 seconds inch hole into the side of the pot and inserting quarter inch irrigation tubing directly into the hole, using a bit of Gorilla Glue to help seal the connection. I give thanks to the guys over at the Global Buckets website for this idea, although I've modified it slightly by drilling the holes into the side of the pot instead of the top. One of the focus areas in my Oya project has been to see how simply the whole system can be made. Working to reduce the number of parts needed to make the system, I found that a simple Oya irrigation system can be made using clay pots, silicone caulk, a 7 seconds carbide drill, Gorilla Glue, quarter inch polyethylene irrigation tubing, and a bucket with a lid. While conducting OYA workshops, folks have asked me what size an OYA needs to be. My answer is that it depends. What it depends on is whether or not the system has a continuous water feed or if it will only be supplied with water intermittently. If the water supply is not constant, it's best to use large OYAs and utilize them as a sort of cistern. Smaller OYAs are better used on a system which is supplied by city water, well water, or with a rain barrel. In fact, I was given a bunch of two and a half inch pots and made them into Oyas. They're working great in one of my gardens where the water comes from a well. One of the issues I've found with the two and a half inch pots is that the silicone caulk doesn't hold well due to the limited surface area around the thin rim of the pot. Out of approximately 60 Oyas made with these small pots, I've had about six of them fail at the glue joint. The solution to the problem seems to be simply to use Gorilla Glue instead of silicone caulk to glue the pots together. I've just started experimenting with this, but it seems to be working fine so far. An oil can be made by sealing the drain holes in two unglazed clay pots with silicone caulk or with silicone caulk and a piece of tile. If the drain holes are small, you can simply set the pots on a sheet of wax paper insert the nozzle of the caulk into the hole and pump in a small amount of caulk. Let the pot sit for about eight hours and then carefully peel it from the paper. If you're using a piece of tile along with the caulk to plug the hole, be sure to inspect inside the pot for roughness. A large carbide bit or the end of a chisel or file can be used to gently remove the rough edge. Once the caulk has set, the holes for the tubing can be drilled. I like to drill the holes in the sides of one of the pots near the top using a drill press. A block of wood or metal is placed under one end of the pot in order to get the proper angle. The holes should be perpendicular to the side of the pot and just below the point where they would run into the underside of the top of the pot. Two holes are drilled opposite of each other. After about every four holes, the bit is dipped in water to keep it from overheating. If you don't have a drill press, you should drill the holes in the top of the pot instead, being careful not to run the chuck of the drill into the pot as you drill the hole. Next, the two pots can be glued together. I usually find that it's best to check them first by aligning them until the rims match up as much as possible. 
and then putting a pencil mark on the side of the pot to indicate the point of best alignment. Some of these pots are seriously out of round and you may have to try a few of them together before you find a pair which lines up fairly well. A bead of caulk is applied to the rim of one pot. The other pot is set on top of it paying attention to the alignment mark and the excess caulk is spread around the edge of the joint using the tip of your finger. Let the caulk set up for about 24 hours before installing the Oya. If you use Gorilla Glue, dampen both pots by dipping the rims in water for about 10 seconds. Apply the glue to one pot and then set it on top of the other pot. Add a weight to the top and allow about 60 minutes for the glue to set up. My home garden is along a fence on the north side of the lot, just outside of my kitchen door. In the spring of this year, I installed about 25 Oyas in the garden in a single row spaced about three feet apart. I marked the handle of my shovel in six inch increments to use it as a ruler and cut the pieces of quarter inch irrigation tubing in 36 inch lengths. The holes for the Oyas were dug about four inches deeper than the Oyas were tall. This allowed me to put about two inches of compost in the bottom of the hole and have about two inches of soil on top of the Oyas. Because the soil in my garden is very sandy, I also added compost around the Oyas to help retain moisture and provide nutrients for the plants. I found it was best to use Gorilla Glue on all of the tubing connections, applying a thin bead of glue at about one eighth inch from the end of the tube and then inserting it into the hole in the pot. It's best to leave the Oyas uncovered until the system has been filled and checked for leaks. Here's my garden along the fence three months later, uh, about mid-June. I have peppers, cabbage, basil, mint, chives, uh, strawberries, asparagus, purslane, onions, cucumbers, summer squash, tomatoes, shallots there, some bee balm, uh, peach tree, yarrow, uh, leeks and onions, more potatoes, pole beans, some rhubarb hiding down there, uh, some more squash plants and cucumbers, collard greens, and uh, lamb's quarters. Here's the regulator bucket for my Oya system. And taking the top off, you can see the water dripping into the bucket. I've set the level low. Uh, the plants really don't demand any more water than that, but if I was finding that there were wilt problems, I would raise the level in the bucket to increase the water flow. Uh, this is connected up to a rainwater system. I'll take a walk back behind the garage here and let you see it. Gonna step over the fence there. And so what I did was I repurposed a uh, IBC tote that I purchased. Uh, a guy on Craigslist had these. Uh, it's a 275 gallon tank. Uh, it's plumbed up to the gutters on my garage roof. And if I get about an inch and a quarter worth of rainfall, it completely fills that tank. Uh, you see there's some algae in the tank. Uh, Next year what I'll do is take that and uh, paint it black so that the sunlight doesn't get into it as much. Uh, the valve is just simply a hose bib. I put a Y fitting on there. Uh, the Y helps flush sediment out of the bottom of the tank so that I don't have to remove the hose. The regulator bucket makes it possible to use small oyas to water the garden. It helps to reduce watering labor. Well, the bucket is placed so that the bottom of it is at garden soil level. Uh, 5 to 15 Oyas can share a quarter inch feed tube, maybe more, you'll have to experiment with it. Uh, holes are drilled in the bucket using a size C or a 7 30 seconds drill bit and the tubes are shoved into the holes. Because the holes are slightly smaller than the outer diameter of the tubing, the tubing stays in place 
without leaking and you don't need any additional fittings. Inside of the bucket, an evaporative cooler valve is used to control the water level and pressure. Higher levels can be used to help prime the system more quickly. Uh, lower levels can be used to conserve water when the plants don't need as much, and so you can regulate the flow through the system by changing the water level. So here's a tour of a raised bed garden with an OEA irrigation system. A uh, regulator bucket is here. The additional hole on the right is for an additional valve. If I wanted to add one, uh, we could, if, as well as feeding it with well water like it is now, we could have a rainwater valve on the other side and uh, set it to a slightly higher level. That way when the rain water ran out, then the well water would kick in. Uh, the tubes come into the bottom of the bucket and go to the various beds. There's basically one tube per bed uh, to simplify troubleshooting on the system. Uh, here's a bed of onions with a number of oyas buried in there. A uh, bed of tomatoes. Uh, I think this one only has four oyas. We were doing some experimenting with the number. Uh, notice as I dig away the soil here that uh, it's very moist underneath and the oyas are very effective at delivering that subsurface moisture which the plants need. And these are small oyas, only two and a half inch, so uh, they're still very effective even though they have a, a very small diameter. One thing I've discovered in this whole experiment is the size of the oya really doesn't matter so long as you can feed water to it continuously. Uh, you see here, this is a bed of squash and uh, some other plants. I'm not sure what all is growing in there. But basically what I did was I cut pieces of tubing 24 inches long, uh, tied all these oyas together. There's five of them in the bed, four uh, in the corners and one in the center. Uh, we placed them about tw uh, 12 inches in from the corners and then in the center. And this is a uh, four foot by four foot raised bed uh, the tube there was just for a bleeder. Uh, again, I do that at the end regardless of whether I'm using stoppers or inserting the uh, tubes directly into the pots. Uh, this is a potato bed which has the oyas buried quite deep in it. Uh, basically the bed was only about half full when we put the seed potatoes in. We kept adding compost on top and uh, so it's nice fertile soil being that it's all compost and the oyas keep the moisture level up. Uh, broccoli, celery, celeriac, uh, same thing. You see the edge of the oya hiding there. Uh, these are basically right at the surface, but plants are healthy other than the deer damage. Uh, we've been having some issues with them coming in and eating the plants. Again, another bed of uh, tomatoes and eggplant looking quite healthy. Uh, these were started from seed earlier this year. Uh, there's the oyas. You see a little dampness down in the corner. Those could be in a little more deeply or perhaps I have a leak in those, but uh, still very effective. The uh, trellis is made from some recycled and repurposed uh, electrical cable tray, and that's for a cucumber plant to climb up on. Uh, one thing that the oyas are not good at is seed germination. That uh, barren bed there was one that we tried to start seeds in, and there's just not enough surface moisture to start the seeds. So here's the overall view of the garden. Uh, this is out at the uh, cabin at the lake. Uh, you see what Michigan's known for here. Lots of water, uh, lots of trees, lots of natural beauty. And you see the lily pads there in the morning. So hopefully your gardening efforts will be successful. I highly recommend the OYA project. Uh, it's really great at reducing the labor and the amount of water that you need in order to keep your garden watered. Uh, if you want to uh, ask me any questions, feel free to contact me here on YouTube. Just shoot me a message and I'll try to respond as quickly as possible. Good luck in your exploits and uh, hopefully you have success like I have with the OYA irrigation.